Victory is sweet, isn't it, church? So this morning, um, you can take your talk notes and you can just fold them up. You can do that, okay? I, I was telling the team back in the back that uh, had this message series began and ready to start, and then this week God just been putting a putting just one one scripture on my mind this week, and and uh, so so we're just going to talk. Uh, and just share from my heart what God has to say to the church today. And I, and I just pray um, that you're going to be encouraged. And, and so don't really have a bunch of notes this morning. We're just going to talk and just let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us. One, uh, one of the people in the back said, I said, I've got two sermons kind of somewhat prepared, but uh, don't know which one until I'm ready to get up there. And, and one of them said, well, just make sure it's the shortest one. And, and I said, well, sometimes the one that, that's the shortest one that might not have very many notes becomes the longest one. So are you sure you want that? But uh, I, I just want to talk from my heart this week. And, and I've been praying. Man, I love God's church. Do you? I love his church. I love God's church so much. When I think about his church, it, you know, you think about it's the church that, that Jesus came here for the first time, right? Because Jesus came and he walked on this earth for 33 and a half years, three and a half years of those he did ministry. And one of the things, one of the watershed statements that, that Jesus shared was when he encountered Peter, he, you know, this brash guy, this, this, this guy that just stuck his foot in his mouth all the time. And, and, and Jesus told Peter, he said, God, God, your name's Peter, which means you're, you're, you're a rock. And Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And, and he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus came to establish the church. And then Jesus did that. He established it. Amen. And then Jesus not only established the church, but he died for the church. And then when Jesus died, when he rose again and when he ascended, Jesus then entrusted us with the church through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because Jesus said, I'm going to go away, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless because I'm going to send you a comforter. And he said, that comforter is the one that's going to walk beside of you, the one that's going to walk along with you, the one that's going to lead you, the one that's going to be in front of you. And he said, this is, this, I'm giving you this power. That's why he said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and you receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be what? My Witnesses. We're given the power keep up. We're given the power of the Holy Spirit so we can be what? A witness to Christ and what he wants to do here on this earth. And I believe that the vehicle that he does his ministry and his mission here on this earth is he does it through the vehicle of the church. He established the church when he, when he ascended, when he sent the Holy Spirit. He says, wait here in the next chapter 2. And when they were all together in one, one accord and they were all together in, in, in one room when they were praying. And, and I would love to see just a sense of urgency in his church today. A sense of urgency to get together and to pray. Because prayer changes the atmosphere and prayer changes the dynamic. Prayer changes the focus. Prayer gives us the marching orders for what God would have for his church. Amen? We used to, you know, growing up, we used to have these things called prayer meetings. But you mentioned in a prayer meeting anymore today's church, people run and people don't show up because that means we got to actually commit to something and we got to actually pray, right? People don't want to pray anymore. People want to come and be entertained and wowed and worshiped and, 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 and all this stuff. And, and that's all great. I mean, I love music and I love preaching and, and I love teaching and, and I love all that stuff. But sometimes we just need to get down to prayer and spend time on our knees before the Lord. Amen. And so he said, he said, I'm going to establish the church. He said, I'm going to die for the church. And then he also said that I'm going to leave, but I'm going to provide for the church. You understand what I just said? He said, I'm going to establish the church. And then I'm going to provide for the church, die for the church. And then I'm going to provide for the church. And then Acts chapter 2, the church exploded. And then now we're here in 2018. And sometimes I feel like the church has lost the power that it had back in the, in, in the days of Acts. And people say, well, well, that was just for that dispensation. No, the Holy Spirit is for all the time. Amen? The Holy Spirit was for then in Acts chapter 2, and the Holy Spirit's for 2018. And so I love God's church. I grew up in the church. And, and, and I think we need to get back as a church and back as a people of God to have this love 
for God's people and have this love for the church yet once again. If you, would you turn your Bibles, because this is a scripture that's just been, been resonating in my, in my spirit this week. and It's in Philippians chapter number 1, and, and one of my favorite people in all of scripture besides Jesus is the Apostle Paul. And I love the Apostle Paul because he was, he was somebody that you wouldn't think God would use. And he was somebody that, even though he had all this religious background, even though that, that he was smart, even though that, 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 that he could line up against all the religious elite of that day, if you were going to pick somebody to, ha- to, to have the clarion call for the New Testament church and to write over two-thirds of the New Testament, it probably wouldn't have been Paul. Because Paul was, a, was, was, was somebody that the Christians feared. You know, the Bible says that they were first called Christians at Antioch. And, 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 and these, these guys were scared to death. of. You mentioned the word Saul. Actually, his name was Saul first. You, and they trembled with fear. You know, I kind of was watching a funny skit um, <laughs> this morning. There's a Christian comedian. His name is John Christ. And, and he said, I was looking, and did you know that the church, churches today have Google reviews? You know how you go to a restaurant and you review a restaurant? Or you go to a play and you review a play or, or a concert or whatever? Did you know that you can look up some churches today and people leave Google reviews? And, and he was showing that, that, that one of these Google reviews said, said um, <laughs> the preacher gave the Google review of, of like 2.5 stars. And that's not very good. Five stars would be good. And, and, and the, the, the Google review said this, I like the worship, but I didn't like the preacher too much. He, he preached very monotone, and he was also screamy. So which one is it? <laughs> monotone is the opposite of screaming, and screaming is the opposite. Which one is it? People don't know what they want. Another, another person left a Google review of one because he said, I came to church and nobody talked to me. How old are we? Can we not go and talk to somebody? And I understand the church should be a friendly place, but the Bible also says to to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. Another Google review said, I didn't like the kind of coffee that they served before. (laughs) I guess it wasn't Starbucks or Seattle's Best. I I don't know. Maybe it was Folgers or or Best Choice. I I don't know. But friends, it's a sad state. When our love for the church depends on the preachers too monotone or too screamy or the kind of coffee and donuts we have. And I mean, if they didn't like the kind of coffee, why don't they make make a recommendation and then they can go make the coffee. Friends, I love God's people and I feel like we need to get back. And and, and this guy saw, man, he he was a guy that the Christians feared. But then he had an encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus, that he was forever changed. Am I doing okay without any notes so far? And he had an encounter with God on the road to Damascus. And as as he has an encounter with God, his life is radically and forever changed. And friends, I want to suggest to you that in today's church, we need to have a fresh encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus where he blinds us and he says, what are you doing? And it leads me to this text in Philippians because the church and Paul had this, this, this love even for all of its failures and all of its opportunities for growth and improvement and, and, and things that we struggle with that they struggled with in the first century church and the same things that we struggle with today in 2018 in this century of the church Paul still had this love for the church. And I resonate with Paul's heart this morning. If, if you have your Bibles there in, first, uh, in, in Philippians, did I say Philippians? I think I said Philippians. Philippians 1, Paul starts off with this normal greeting, like he always starts off with all of his letters to the churches. He's, you know, he says greetings and, and, and he greets them. He says, To all the saints that are in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons. And he gives them a greeting. He says, Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. But this is where I've landed this week. 
in verse 3. And I'm just sharing my heart today. Can I do that? Would you allow me to do that? I just want to share my heart. The Apostle Paul says to this church at Philippi, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And I just want to stop right there. And I'm going to go down a little willing to just do the rest of it for just a few minutes. But, but I, I love this phrase because that's where I'm at. This is where I'm at this morning. <clears throat> is that when I think of you, all of you, when I think of Eastside Community Church, I thank God. This pastor thanks God when I remember you. I just want you to feel that this morning. That I am so thankful to be able to be a pastor. But not even to be a pastor, but just to be able to do life with you, my church family, and my church friends. And can I just be honest, and this isn't a prideful thing that I'm talking about this morning, but not every pastor can say that. Because I hang around a lot of pastors. Not just in this community, but I hang out with pastors in the state. I hang out with pastors in the national movement. I'm part of different forums and groups and social media. And, and, and yeah, churches have struggles and churches have, again, opportunities for growth and improvement. There's always things that we can do better, just like your life and just like your home and just like your job, your family, your kids, right? You love your kids, right? But you know there's always something they can do better, right? But friends, sincerely from the bottom of my heart this morning, as sure as I'm standing here, I thank my God for you and for each one of you. There's not a one in this place that when I think about, have we might have had struggles or strife or tension occasionally? Yeah, sure, we all do. We're human. We're, we're people. There's no perfect church because there's no perfect people. Amen. And, and I always joke around. I say, you know, if, if we go try to make, um, go to a church that we think's perfect, well, when we go there, it's going to automatically become imperfect because we have hurts, habits, hang-ups, difficulties. We have flaws too, right? So that perfect church is no longer perfect. But, uh, but ultimately, there's no perfect church. But I thank my God for you. Now, I was thinking. I was just thinking. And, and, and maybe some of this is spurred because I keep getting stuff given to me about, like, the history of this church. And I was like, man, this, is, this, this stuff's so cool. And, and, I, and, I, and this was given to me this past week, and I think this is maybe what started this whole business about just, like, God redirecting me. And I was given the annual report of the First Church of God in 1978. And I just got to thinking about God's church is God's church. People have come and gone. Pastors have come and gone. But his church still prevails. And, and I was thinking in this annual report, one of the things that it said, it was talking about, this is the annual report of 1978. But it says, the first Sunday in 1977, we held church in our new building. This one. And it was our miracle building. And friends, we're not done holding church in this miracle building. I thank God for his provision. And this is, this is what, I, what I say in all that. I thank God for the many people that paved the way through First Church of God, through Eastside Church of God when it started in 1966. Then it was Eastside Community Church, and then came and, and two, two came back together. I thank God for the many people in both churches that followed God, that trusted God. I, I came across other things, man, people that sold bonds to, to, to help pay for this thing. People that gave of their time and people that gave of their money. And see, sometimes we forget that stuff. 
Because as we go to continue to remodel or continue to do something and change something out, we're like, man, we can't do this new thing or we can't, you know, paint this or, or whatever. But we forget. And, and we make today's struggles the struggles, but we forget about the real struggles of the people that, 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 that God used to do this. We just, I'm thankful today. I'm thankful today, as sure as I'm standing here, that I have a peace and I have a thankfulness that, that I want to be here. And some of y'all probably is like, the pastor's talking from his heart this morning. He's, he's resigning. No, that's not, that's not where we're going. I just want, want to tell you that. I mean, I, I hope this, you guys are like, no, I don't want you to do that. But, but we're not looking to go anywhere. You know, we're not accepting offers. and You know, we're not sending resumes out. But I feel like I'm just, God... I believe that God has, has gotten me to a place of thankfulness. To appreciate what you have. Because until you appreciate what you have, God can't use you and take you to that next level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so I'm thankful. And, 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 I, and I pray that, that no one gets offended because I don't want to leave anyone out this morning. But I, I got to thinking about just different things that I'm thankful for. I, I'm thankful for the wonderful seniors that we've had in this church and that we continue to have in this church that pave the way. Seniors that call me and say, Pastor, I just want to tell you that I'm praying for you. I know I'm not maybe able to attend and, 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 and I want to serve and I want to work and I want to do this and I want to do that, but I can't because I'm physically not able to. But I just am praying for you and I'm praying for the church. And friends, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful and they're not here today, but I'm thankful for, for the Kriners. You know, I, I read in this annual report that the, that the Kriners in the, uh, 1978, they were in charge of the puppet ministry. I didn't even know that. Didn't even, how cool is that? And I think about other people, and, and, and I, I keep finding all this stuff, and there's a common thread in all this stuff, and it's Charlotte's mom, Martha. That I keep reading, and there's a Sunday school superintendent report from Martha Branchcomb, and then it talks about how like they, they took the kids to, to, to youth camp and, 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 and junior camp and, and all that stuff. And it's like, so I, I'll text Charlotte, like, I found another thing that your mom's name is mentioned, and, 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 and Bill, Billy's uh, uh, mom, Charlotte. And, and it's just so amazing. And I thank God. I thank God for people like Odell Mary Jane. That are just that 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 have wisdom and that have grace and that have the love of Christ in them. And then when I'm in my office and 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 the pastor's too lazy to go outside and take the Easter egg extravaganza announcement off the sign, who shows up? Brother Odell shows up with his granddaughter, and 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 I had to go to appointment, and I'm driving out there, and I see him pulling off the letters, and they're flying everywhere in the air in the wind, and Chaslin's there trying to catch him. I thank God. For that, do we have opposition or do we have struggles? Do we have again area of opportunities? Yes, we do. God, in any time that you're trying to move forward, they're gonna you're gonna be stretched and and there's gonna be tension. But that tension is a good thing. But I still thank God for people and for the, for the seniors. I th I think of Sister Thelma, and I think a sister Thelma had an had a amazing part to play in the life of this church, in the first church of God. I just think about that. And I'm not trying to miss anybody, but, but there's just people that come to my mind, and I'm just like, man, thank God for our seniors. You know, when I get together with my pastor buddies, sometimes we're like, man, man, we're, we're trying to do this, this new music, or we're trying to do this, or whatever, and then just like, Man, our seniors are resistant. They're like, do you have that problem? And I'm like, no. They might not like it, but they act like they do. <laughs> and that's why, that's why, because my heart, <laughs> we're going to do the new, but we're going to do the old too. Because it's for everybody. The church isn't about just the young generation. The church isn't just about the old generation. The church is about everybody. And that's why we're, we're a family unit. And I love that. And so I thank my God. And, and Paul says, he says, I thank 
My God, upon every remembrance of you. When you think of the church and when you think of each other, what do you, what do you think about? Do you dread it? You know, I, I think of, you know, you talk about, you know, East Side. And you think about, I'll throw out some more names to you. I think about Jim Gailey. Think about Teresa Gailey. Wonderful, wonderful people. And I'm so thankful that I had a chance to get to eat, know even Jim before he passed away. Just a great man. And can I tell you what he was? Probably above all else, and just from, from me knowing him just a short time, he was a man of prayer. He had a notebook he, he would keep in his front pocket. And he would write, first of all, when he would meet you on a Sunday morning, he would, he would say, hey, what? Can I get your name? And to remember it, he would slip it in that notebook pocket and write it, slip out that notebook and write it when nobody was looking. And so he could remember it. So then the next Sunday he would come and he's like, da 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 da. And he's like, he, so he could remember your name. Everybody thought he had a gift of remembering, but he, no, he was just smart enough to write it down. But I also know that he was a man of prayer. And Sister Ter Teresa, she, she did our prayer chain for so long when I came here. And then she moved and, and wasn't able to really do it anymore. But she's a woman of prayer. And I thank my God for people like that. You younger people in here, when you get older, be like our seniors that we have now and we have had in this church. Be sweet. Be loving. Defer your own way, even when you want your own way. <laughs> and there's lessons for us all, because you can't get to be sweet in your 70s if you're not sweet in your 40s. Amen? Amen? You can't be sweet in your 80s and 90s if you haven't worked on it. When you're in your 50s and your 60s. Are, are, you, are, you, are you hanging with me? So I just want to convey to you. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. You know we, we were praying. And, 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 I, and I pray specific things. Over two years ago. I started praying. For help up there. And see I'm just crazy. If you, if you, I'm crazy. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> and there's times and, and that you might just I, I, I'm specific about what I what 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 I believe God wants but but also I mean sometimes I'm wrong many times I'm probably wrong sometimes but but I started laying hands on different instruments or different holes that we had up front and I prayed for two years Two long years. And I said, Lord, we need some help. Because, you know, we've had transition and, and everything like that. And then God sends not one piano player, but two piano players. Then he sends a second bass player. Then he sends uh, another guitar player. Then he sends vocalist. He brings people back to the fold. God is good. And Easter Sunday, we have a full stage of 12 people up there. I'm thankful for that. And I told them this morning, I said, I, I, I need to do something that's hard for me. I need to let go. I, I love music and I love leading. I love singing and, and I love worshiping and stuff like that. But it's not, I don't need to do everything. I thank my God that God brings people when you need them. And I thank God for all the people that serve. I thank God for all the people that have served. And, and, and I'm, here it is. I'm thanking God in advance for the people that will step in and serve to fill those gaps that we have. We have leadership gaps in this church. We need some elders. I'm praying, and I've been praying God would raise up some leadership. We need a few elders. I'm praying we need some teachers that God would lead, lead them, lead, you know, raise it up. We need somebody to, 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 to lead our youth ministry. I'm praying that God would raise them up, whether in here or bring them in. I'm praying that God would do that. 
I've reached out to Christian colleges and things like that, and, and the cupboard is bare even there. Because let me tell you, everybody wants to come, and they want to come, and, and they want to serve part-time, but get paid $80,000. You know, you know what I'm saying? Pete, can I tell you, a lot of people want in ministry, but they don't understand that they probably really don't want in ministry. Can I tell you, if you want to be in ministry, it's probably not a good idea. If you want it in your flesh, it's probably not a good idea. Because it's a high calling. I had a professor, his name was Dr. Cliff Sanders. He actually, and this is how cool this dude was in, at, at Mid-America Christian University. You know, I called him Dr. Cliff, Dr. Sanders. He's like, don't call me doctor. Just call me Cliff. And that's why a lot of people was like, what do you want me to call you? Pastor, reverend, brother, whatever. I guess I could go on the internet and pay like $200 and get a doctorate, I guess. You could call me doctor. But I'm just Gary. I have flaws just like everybody else, but I thank God for those that served, for those that have, or have served, those that are serving now, and I'm thanking God in advance for those that will step in and those that will serve. I so much, I thank God, I thank God for that. And then we just, we continue on in this text. We continue on in this text. And he says, I thank my God. I, but, but just when you think of me, when you think of the church, when you think of those people in your, are you thankful for them? Maybe they give you trouble sometimes, more than you want. But are you still thankful for them? Oh, I, another thing I'm thankful for. See, I told you I really didn't write this stuff down. So, but I was thinking about this. I'm thankful for stability from Paula. Going on 18 years. Not 19? Lord have mercy. <laughs> but, but she's been through ups and downs. She has had many people sit in the chair that I sit in now. And they, they all prepared her to be able to put up with me, right? Amen. And I'm not always happy. You know? <laughs> but I thank God for, for, for her that, that I can depend on and that I can count on. You know, just, just last week, she stayed a lot of extra time that she doesn't get paid for just to get the job done. And that's stuff that you don't know about. You know? I, I thank God, and I'm not... Don't want to embarrass, embarrass Tara, but I th I'm so thankful. I was thinking this week, I'm so thankful for you and for how you work on the treasury. How you come in the office during the week and, and, and do that. And it's, e it's easier to come in during the week than to, you know, doing, doing it, you know, not, not coming in. You, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm trying to say. But I thank God for, the, for you and for the job that you're doing. And thanks, Rowdy, for letting her do it. <laughs> but I just, I thank God. I thank God for the elders that we do have that, that, that trust me to be pastor and that are also there that when I'm an idiot sometimes that, that, that they, they, they clean it up and they fix it <laughs> and they still love me regardless. I'm, I'm just thankful this morning. Can you tell? I'm, just, I'm thankful today. There's, I mean, I could... I could go around the room, every, every, everybody, I could say something about everybody in this place. I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful. Billy, I'm thankful for you, man. You're a meat cutter, but you're more than a meat cutter. You're a man of God. And you're a servant of God. I asked him this morning in the back, I said, hey, are you, are you up for doing announcements? And he said, whatever you need me to do. He's not in it for the title, for the position, but he's in it to serve. And I thank God for that. And like I said, I could go around this room to everybody, and, and I... The other part said, man, I'm wrestling because I don't want, don't want somebody to get their feelings hurt. or don't want to, but, but I hope you understand my heart. And if you sincerely, if your feelings are hurt, come talk to me. And I'll say nice things to you too. <laughs> 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 but 
But I thank God for people that in the middle of the week, just in this last three weeks, there, there's times that I, that I doubt myself and I doubt my calling sometimes and I doubt. It's like, man, am I being a good enough pastor or preacher? And then three times within the last two weeks, I get text messages from random people that I don't even have their name or their phone number really saved in my phone. Because, and and I, it's like, we just want to tell you that we love you and we thank God for you and we appreciate the job that you're doing. And just other things. And you're just like, thank you, God. So I thank God upon my... I'm just like Paul this morning. I'm not Paul. I'm not, sure. not even close. But my heart is like Paul today. Is overflowing. Because I say, God, I thank you for this church and for these people. And God, what you want to do? I really believe that God wants to do something magnificent. Not so we can get the glory, not so we can put it in the paper, not so whatever. But because souls' lives are at stake in eternity and they're, they're depending on that. There's people that are going to hell all around us. And they need Jesus. And you are the ones that Jesus is going to use to be the hands and feet of him and his work. You know, and, and I think, and, and let's just, let me just look at a couple more things. He says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine, I make request for you with all joy. And I just want you to know that you have a pastor that prays for you. Daily. There's times that in the middle of the night I wake up and, and he just, your name comes to my mind. And it's really coming to my spirit. It's really not coming to my mind, but it comes to my spirit and then it goes to the mind. And I pray for you. And I pray that God's will would be done in your life. I pray that you would seek his will for your life. I pray that you wouldn't trust me to tell you what God's will is for your life. But I pray that you would seek it for yourself. And, and this is my prayer for you. And, and God has revealed this to me more and more. I'm not trying to be way out there. But my prayer for you is that you would be faithful. Faithful. God is all about faithfulness. Faithful in all that you do. Do it to all the glory that, that you can do for him. Your job, do it for him. Your, your, your marriage, do it for him. Your relationships, do it for him. But your church, would you do it for him? He says, I am making prayers for you. And then he continues on. He says, for your fellowship in the gospel. In other words, there is a partnership there. And when you come into partnership with this church, man, I am so thankful when people do that. When they say, yeah, I want to be a, in Church of God. You know, Brother Tom, we don't have church membership. And I think sometimes that's, that's failed us as a, as a church movement. You know, because there's no, there's no connection. But we, we encourage here at Eastside the people to come into partnership with us and say, hey, I'm going to be a member. I'm going to be a partner of God's church. And I'm going to be faithful. And I'm going to be faithful in my service and faithful in my giving. And that's what Paul was talking about. He's like talking about, because Paul's, it's a very personal letter that he's writing. I'm going to wind it down here in a second. But Paul is writing this very personal letter to the church of Philippi. Because Paul's in jail. And he's writing to this church that he started on his second missionary journey to the Philippian people at Philippi, at Caesarea Philippi. And he says, guys, thank you for your fellowship because you've been, I've been in jail, I've been in prison, but yet you have not forgotten me. You still send me letters. You still help me in your, in your giving, sending money to do missionary work. Maybe not through me, but to, to, to my, my protege, Timothy. And that's why he writes there. If you notice at the beginning of the text, he says, Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, because Paul had a co-laborer. And friends, we need to all, all have co-laborers. And he says, thank you for your fellowship. And then, friends, I just want to leave you with this this morning. Because I am confident in this very thing. <laughs> Paul told this to the Philippian church. And I'm telling it to you, that he that has began a good work in you, he's began a good work in you.
because you're here. We'll be faithful to complete it even until the coming of the Lord. That's my prayer for you today. It's not only do I thank him for you, but as I thank him for you, I pray that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Don't give up. You know, I'm a basketball guy, and, you know, uh, a, a coach, he was coach at North Carolina State. I think they won a 1983 national championship over uh, the University of Houston. But the North Carolina State Wolfpack were coached by Jim Valvano, and, and, and many years ago he, had, he, he, he came down with cancer and he had to quit coaching and, and do all this stuff. But at, some, at one of the award shows for ESPN, the ESPY Awards, he got up and he talked. And he said this. He said, cancer can take my mind and cancer can take my body, but cancer will never take my spirit and my will and he said, if you remember me, say nothing else. Remember me, say this, don't give up. Don't ever give up. And those words have become the rallying cry of the Jimmy V Foundation. He's long since passed away because cancer did take his body. But they have raised millions and billions of dollars through cancer research to find a cure for cancer. And friends, I believe even the the spiritual is a lot more important than the, than, the, than the sports world. And here I'm going to tell you that he's began, he that began a good work in you is faithful to complete it until the day of his return. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Remember what Paul also said. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And friends, I'm so thankful that I've had many people around me, my dad and just, just others, that I've men of God that I've seen run the race. They didn't always run it straight, but somehow they got back on the track. You know? They veered off into other people's lanes before. They ran into some, some barricades, but they got back in their lane and they stayed faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. People will come and go. Again, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Pastors come and go. But Christ, it's about Jesus. There's a, there's a psalm that, that it's early 90s said, May all who come behind us find us faithful. Friends, I, I want my daughters to see me not as the greatest preacher ever. And can I just even say not as the greatest father ever. But I want my kids to say that their dad was faithful to God. Even in my humanity. As we stand this morning, I'm going to ask the team to come back up.